Jack, we have to start uh, after the COVID outbreak just to check, first of all, how everyone is. All okay in terms of anything COVID related. I think we um, we had obviously concerns about the welfare of the players because some were affected by it in terms of the general health. So, um, And then there was a staggered return to training, so the enforced break upon the HTC being closed and then due to isolation period and when players tested positive, etc., there was um they came back in, in different numbers. So once you had them all back, um the end of last week was encouraging, as I said, and then pleased that there was no last long um longer term effects. If you like a couple of them took two or three days to get back to normal in terms of return to training, but but now we've had, you know, the last four or five days behind us they're all in a good place. Yeah, it's been three and a half weeks, obviously, since our last fixture. How have you used that time? Because I can imagine it's been quite difficult, obviously, like you say, with the staggered times of people coming back. Yeah, I think, first of all, we were um, desperate to play the Ross County match and the games thereafter because we wanted to get back to winning matches and games and players were, were looking forward to doing so. Um, and the enforced break wasn't ideal. The fact that we weren't able to come in here and work with the players at all as well. But what we had to do at that point, use it as productively as we can. So from a from a staffing point of view, to look again at you know what we had did well in that more than open period of the season and what we needed to do better within the, the last four matches. And also look ahead to this period. We've got 10 games, I think, in 40-odd days and, and look at what we need to do within that period to win matches. And there's a, you know, an element of short term, if you like, about that. And um, So we used it productively as a staff. And then when the playing group came back as a whole, They've been really good, really, really encouraging. And, and naturally, as a manager, I think you're a little bit anxious about that period because of the disruption to it. But that has been flipped on its head, if you like, by how good they've been over the last five, six days, what they've produced on the training pitch in terms of the physical output has been really good. Um, and then quality has been really good as well. And I, I just sense around them at the moment there's an excitement around, not just about Sunday, but this, this period that lies ahead. And there's also been a return to training for, for Christian Doidge as well. A little bit earlier than, than what we probably expected, but how's he been getting on? He's been good, probably a month ahead of where we anticipated when he first um, suffered the injury in Croatia. Been pleased with his conditioning levels, um, how he's looked. Played 45 minutes um, of a bounce game earlier this week as well. So he's, he'll be back in the squad for Sunday. Um, so obviously he's still working his way back to full fitness, but having him back available and in contention for us, as I keep repeating, not just for Sunday, but for the games thereafter, is huge for us because um, his goals record, goals per game record has been brilliant since I came here. His all-round performance still has been very good. So a, a big, big boost to not just me, to Christian, but also to the whole playing group. And he's one of four players to receive a new contract this week. A, a real commitment from the club and from yourself and Ben Cancel to show that we want to keep the core of this group together. Yeah, I think that... You know, within the senior management of the club is a recognition that stability is important. I can understand the clamour for change, such as the nature of modern society and, and modern football. And we'll continue to do that. We'll continue through each window to try and strengthen and improve the, the group in the areas we think are appropriate. And there'll be movement in both directions to enable that to happen. But there's also an understanding that there's players within this group that contribute massively on pitch and off pitch to not only make your team successful in terms of results, but the culture within the training ground and the standards that we push to all the time and that does take a period of time to get right and it's a continual process to get it absolutely spot on and the two don't always go hand in hand ideally they do um, and you know for the last couple of years they, they have to a large extent but we've got to keep improving and say those ones that have committed their future to the club this week different stages of their career um, with different futures ahead of them if you like but but hugely encouraging for us that they want to do it and also the the, the willingness in the club to do so as well. Yeah, and Steve Keane's come in as academy director as well. How closely will you two work and how excited are you by that appointment? Well, I think it was a role that, that absolutely needed to be filled. The uh, people that have worked in the academy have had a really tough time over the last couple of years. Um, they have probably suffered the most out of everybody at the football club, uh, on the football side certainly, because it's been stripped back and they've had to deal with limited resources um, and, and all sorts of disruption to training schedules, etc., so they have my respect and admiration for the, for the way they've handled that and continue to try and develop young players, but we needed to make it better and stronger. So the, the um, recruitment of academy director was important. I said Steve is somebody that, uh, there may be a misconception about how well I know him, I know him professionally, um, only through coach education. Beyond that, no relationship if you like. So um, the professional aspect was important. Uh, so the club considered him and amongst other candidates and felt right he was the right fit. And um, yeah, I think he's somebody that 
we as a staff have a level of respect for for what he's achieved in the game and he's, he's understand the experience of it and I know he's got a real drive and hunger to improve young players and also develop coaches. I think that's important within the academy. So I've no doubt the academy will feel the benefit of it. I think, as I said, it's something that was overdue and needed to happen. And not just for my tenure at the club, I think it's something that, that will go beyond that, that it's important that we get right and, and continue to ensure that Hibs is a club that produces young players but also gives them that opportunity to have a pathway to the first team. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned a little bit earlier on uh, the the positive nature in in the group over the past kind of week, week and a half, going into what is a, a massive game on Sunday against Rangers in the semi final. What what do you expect from them? Because obviously there's been been change there, and new managers now come in. Although he obviously won't be taking charge on Sunday. I think the um, they're a team who have played in a very structured way for the last two or three seasons now. The playing personnel hasn't changed. You know, the manager has left and staff has left. The playing personnel remains the same, so I don't envisage much change in terms of how they go about things. Then obviously the, the appointment of the new manager has come pretty late in terms of towards Sunday. So we have an understanding how Rangers play, but there's been a, a, a huge amount of focus this week is to make sure we are at it in terms of our own performance levels within without the ball. And we've worked hard on that over this period we've had enforced upon us. Um, and... We've got a group that absolutely believe they can go win the game on Sunday. You know, real determination to do so, and I, and I want to not just win Sunday, but win a cup. We came close um, on a lot of occasions now, and, and we want to get closer again and then go and win one. Yeah, we've had a lot of experience at, at Hampton over recent years, but this one will have a different feel, obviously, with supporters inside. Absolutely, the games. Um, you know, the last you know, the four occasions we've been there since I came to the job have been. Strange. Um, all stadiums are strange without fans, but the hand in particular is quite eerie. Um, distance that players are from the the, the, the stands, etc. Um, and even arriving at the stadium has a, a kind of surreal feel around it. So this Sunday will feel like a big game uh, from the players' arrival at the stadium to, to warm up to the match starting, etc. And we've got to produce a performance that reflects how big a bigger game. As I said, that I've been really encouraged and optimistic about how the players have trained this week and how their, their mood is and their mindset, etc. And um, you know, that's the thing for me. We go and produce a performance that reflects the mood they've shown this week and what they've shown in the training pitch. And I'll be delighted and I think it, it gives us a brilliant opportunity to win the game. Just finally, a, a little update on, on team news. Um, Kyle McGuinness, uh, Dan Mackay, how are both of those? Yeah, both remain absent. Um, Dan, he obviously had the ankle injury, fairly serious ankle injury, but, but it's getting closer, but had um, was disrupted with COVID. So his return to even rehabilitation was delayed a little bit. And Kyle remains out. We um, it's frustrating for him, frustrating for me because it wasn't something we anticipated initially. We'd rule him out for a significant time period, but it is, and it continues to do so. Um, can't put a definitive date on it at the moment. I'd love him to be back before the international break, but as a, eh, sorry, the winter break. But um, as things stand, a little bit unknown, but certainly won't be available for Sunday. Thank you for speaking to us, and good luck on Sunday. Cheers, Adam. Thank you.